An international seminar titled Non-Killing Korea Six Culture Exploratory Seminar was held throughout this week in Seoul. It was co-organized by the Seoul National University's Asia Center and the Center for Global Non-Killing. And we have with us right now on the line the founder of the Center for Global Non-Killing, Dr. Glenn Page. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Page. Thank you for inviting me. So I understand this isn't your first time in Korea. In fact, I heard that you actually were here more than 50 years ago during the Korean War. So does that experience have any relation with your founding of the Center for Global Non-Killing? Yes, uh, definitely. And uh, uh, 60 years ago, I was a young soldier with the 1st Korean Infantry Division in uh, September to December 1950. And... uh, uh, later, I returned to Seoul National University as a uh, visiting professor mm-hmm. uh, in the School of Public Administration in 1959-61. So I experienced the April 19th student uh, revolution and the uh, May 16, 1961 uh, coup d'etat. So, mm-hmm. And uh, so Korea has been a uh, concern with Korea has been with me from age 21 to now, which I'm 81 at the moment. And without Korean experience, the Center for Global Non-Killing would not have been established. I see. So the seminar you have led is called Non-Killing Korea Six Culture Exploratory Seminar. And before we talk more about this seminar, uh, could you tell us what non-killing is? I understand that you came up with the term yourself a few years back. But well, that's a good uh, question because non-killing is not in the English dictionary. As far as we know, it was first used in the year 2002 in the book. The title is called Non-Killing Global Political Science. can be found in our website, uh, nonkilling.org, mm-hmm. which uh, uh, listeners can, uh, look, uh, can look it up. And non-killing basically focuses on killing off human beings, but can be extended to animals and other forms of life. A non-killing society would uh, uh, would be a society in which people don't kill each other and don't threaten to kill, and there are not a lot of weapons designed to kill people or justifications for killing them, and that the conditions of society are, aren't based on threat or use of killing force. So, to, uh, so that's the general idea. The concept is developed more on the website, so listeners can look at that and and uh, see. Mm-hmm. And uh, going back to this week's seminar, I hear that the seminar is the first of its kind in the world. And uh, what makes it so? And what significance does this seminar hold? Well, it's just the first step. And you can imagine uh, all of the listeners asking, if you were asked to, what are the non-killing aspects of your culture from, you know, in history right up to now. And uh, so this is the first time that six uh, countries or cultures have been asked that. We've asked North Korea, uh, South Korea, and, and uh, uh, China, Russia, Japan, United States to do this. Mm-hmm. It was done once in 2004 in the Philippines. Is a non-killing Filipino society possible? But this is unique in the fact that there are six different cultures be, uh, uh, being asked that question. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what were some of the main issues that were explored at the seminar sessions? Well, the... the um, the interesting thing is we, we went uh, back into ancient times. Some of the very interesting things are how the non-killing and, and values, uh, ancient values like love, love came up in all the six uh, culture uh, explorations. Uh-huh. So the main issues are how these beautiful love values in Buddhism and Christianity and Confucianism and the gap between why is this society so, so violent in killing. That's the main issue. Mm-hmm. And I guess the main question is, is it really possible to achieve a non-killing Korea? Well, if, if we, if we uh, uh, just uh, think about uh, things, uh, you know, in a narrow way, it, you can be pessimistic, but certainly it's going to be possible. For example, just consider 27 countries in the world don't have armies. 95 uh, countries have abolished the death penalty completely. Mm-hmm. 47 countries allow conscious objection to military service, and most Koreans who've ever lived have never killed anyone, including now. That's true. So um, what are some of the major... uh, What about the other countries? Uh, Would it be possible in other countries as well? Well, uh, 
we uh, uh, every single country and, and culture in the whole world has these non-killing uh, ast- attributes of it. If they didn't have uh, these non-killing things, love and human beings and uh, so forth, we wouldn't be alive today. So we've got over six billion people living in the world. Uh, there, there must be hope about non-killing capabilities. Otherwise, we would have killed ourselves off many, many centuries ago. Mm-hmm. I guess that's true. So what are some of the major differences between cultures when looking at achieving non-killing? Well, um, it... it uh, one of the interesting things we found out was that the more the cu- uh, culture suffers from killing, the more interested they, they are in non-killing. Right. For example, our center has uh, uh, great uh, resonance in the Congo with the, and Rwanda, where the genocide has been, or in Colombia, which is so violent. And we have another group in uh, Haiti, which is very extremely violent. Mm-hmm. So uh, the countries that uh, suffer so much killing, they're very much interested in knowledge and, and, and organization and how to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, what about North Korea, though? I heard they are not represented in the seminar. That's right. They would have joined if we had been willing to meet uh, outside of, of uh, South Korea or mm-hmm. Japan or the United States. But we wanted, uh, this is a non-killing, and we wanted on Korean land, and uh, we decided we would meet here. But in the future, we will uh, 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 share the seminar findings. Now, mm-hmm. I, um, I reported uh, on my observation in North Korea, and I visited between 1987 and 92. Mm-hmm. So I presented a paper, Non-Killing in North Korean Culture, Discoveries of an Ex-Enemy Soldier. So we'll see. I think in the future we can engage them in this as we pre- repeat this seminar in the future. Mm-hmm. I hope it will be done. I see. And uh, going back to your book for a little bit, I heard it took you more than 20 years to write the book Non-Killing Global Political Science. Could you tell us why it took so long? Well, basically I had to re-educate myself <laughs> ah. from a political scientist with normal uh, uh, political science education. Mm-hmm. I've written a book on the Korean War. I interviewed President Truman. I wrote a book called The Korean Thing. Mm-hmm. So it didn't take me 20 years to write it, about three, but it took me 20 uh, more than 20 years to study the religions and the histories and the sciences and the global, to look at things globally. So the result of that 28 years is in the book, Non-Killing Global Political Science, being translated into 22 languages in eight years. And uh, 300 scholars in 200 universities in 50 countries are now organized in 20 non-killing research. And so the result of it, something is happening. Mm-hmm, I see. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Page. Thank I do you. hope that we will eventually see a world without humans killing humans.